Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 PS Vita review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Army Corps of Hell and it's going to be the last Vita review for a while because while I've still got Wipeout to do, you might have noticed as the vids have gone on and they've went up, my voice has started to go, me, I'm rambling more, it's because I've got total confusion and my head's in a complete mind fuck of a state because I've absorbed this much information and spewed out this much information and done this that and the other and I'm just totally frazzled and I think I need a break from them so I might do Wipeout but let's be honest it's Wipeout there's a reason I haven't done that one yet because you already are going to know if you want the game or not Either way, this, if you've never played it before, it's basically Pikmin for adults. That really is the only way I can describe it. It's how pretty much everyone describes it, and it's because it's true. At the start, you can start the game at the options. You can change your music volume. You can change your sound effects volume. You can reset it to default, and you can delete your save data. Kind of makes you wonder why they're there. Passcodes, you can get passcodes not through the game, but from playing online. And they quite simply unlock loot for you, and the loot can do many a thing. It can upgrade your offense, your defense. Um, when you start the game, you can go into selecting stage. You can view your alchemy and sort that out. You can go into multiplayer because the game is four player. Um, you can go into your item. Oh, this is where it really does prove I've got bad eyesight. Item. Encridian, I think that says. You can go into your player equipment. I, I just call it the item menu personally. Your player equipment, you can go into your demonic compendium, or you can just go back to the main menu. But for now, I'm going to go into the stage. Um, choose how many goblins I've got because I'm on an early file. I've only got them 30 ones. There's three types, just like Pikmin. Um, you fire them and command them, just like Pikmin. Uh, the types are soldiers, spearmen and magi, and as you'd probably imagine, soldiers are your basic grunts, spearmen are your slightly upgraded grunts that have got longer attack, and magi are ones that you can do your spells. And the whole point is, you fire your little goblins onto your enemies here, and you can then do a salvo attack there, and you kick the crap out of them, and you kill them, and maybe some loot comes out, and then you fire it on the your little goblins onto the loot, which uh, is a slight problem with the game, because just like in Pikmin, uh, although more so in this I found it'll sometimes attach itself to the loot rather than the enemy and you might get killed. Uh, it wasn't so bad in Pikmin because it wasn't really an action focused game. Uh, it, as much as it had action and strategy, it wasn't so much about killing all the enemies, it was about using your time limit wisely, getting the um, items for your ship to repair it and then go back or in the second game there was no time limit and it was about getting items to be able to buy your company back or some crap like that I'll be honest I wasn't too keen on Pikmin 2 because take away the time limit I found no sense of urgency or fun in the game whereas with this it is just a straight all out action game you go from generic grey looking scene to fight generic purple monster here you do it over and over again over a generic bridge and everything's all boring and plain until you get to a boss and then you'll shit yourself because the bosses are amazing it's worth playing the game for the bosses alone uh, only if you can get it cheap though it's definitely not the type of thing that um, I can see it if you're buying at full price, like for example the PSN's price of £35, that, that's just ridiculous and you're probably not going to enjoy it at all. I got it online for £20, I definitely think it's worth that. Um, and as I say, you go from generic area to generic area, then you can go across to here and equip your goblins if you want to, or you can just continue on if you're happy with them. And when you get the boss, as I say, you'll shit yourself because how amazing they are. Graphically, the game's okay, but it's not amazing. Even for a launch game, it's not all that great. Um, musically, the game is atrocious. I love metal, but even this pushed me to my limit. I can't stand it. I found myself either playing the game on mute or just listening to an iPod and that's pretty much all I can say about the game other than that it's got about 40 stages so there's plenty to do if you enjoy it and it is a really good action strategy game with some good kind of RPG elements of leveling things up it's just a shame that you are going to be doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and it's only really when the bosses come out that things change up a little bit um, so that's all I can say then and as I say, that might well be your lot for Vita reviews for quite some time. So, until then, I'll leave you alone. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion. So instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. 
So thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also if you did find it helpful don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time this has been Demon212 signing off.